Okay, this is video one for the phylum mollusca. And uh, today our objectives are to describe the characteristics defined in the phylum mollusca. We're going to talk about five different classes and some of the orders within those classes. And we're going to explain some of the evolutionary adapt adaptations and identify common New Zealand mollusks, many of which are in your shell collection and you've already been exposed to. Actually, these um, aren't just the objectives for this lecture, but these are the objectives, uh, the learning objectives for you uh, to test yourself on your knowledge of mollusks. So let's go through a little bit of a PowerPoint or a little bit of a slideshow of what we um, are likely to see with some of the local ones. Here are some uh, black narita and there's a nice volute. Oh, this is m more than just what we're expected to see local, but we'll s it's a image show of a whole lot of different types of mollusks that you might find around the world. Uh, here's a local pawa, a blackfoot pawa, tasty little critters. And here's a nice octopus. Um, scapopods, these things are also known as tusk shells. And this is a 400-year-old uh, Maori necklace. And these uh, tusk shells you find off, quite often in the uh, Manukau Harbor. All right, here's a sea hare. All right, and uh, so these ones have are named from um, these projections on their bodies, which sort of look like a like rabbit ears a little bit. And you'll see that this little bit of purple smoke is is uh, hanging around in the water column around it, and these things actually um, will inject uh, ink like a uh, like a squid or an octopus when they're threatened. So they can get up to a, a couple of kilos. They're fairly rare, but uh, we do see them around New Zealand a bit, and often very brightly colored, beautiful colors, much like these, these nudibranchs. Hopefully a few of you have seen nudibranchs. The clown nudibranchs are quite common around um, around the uh, Bay of Plenty area when you're diving in walls and you'll see the little egg cases quite a bit that look like a little rose. Uh, uh, yeah, like a little rosella. Okay, and uh, or a rosette, I suppose, of, of eggs, which we'll be familiar with later on in this lecture. Okay, here's another beautiful nudibranch. Um, here is a limpet, and you might not think that a limpet like this, a nudibranch, and an octopus are all quite uh, connected and have the same body plan, but we'll see in this lecture that that's the way it is. Okay, there's a beautiful top shell, a jewel top top snail, uh, one of the many animals that can found it, be found in the branches of, uh, of corals, and... Um, you can see that this is more of a tropical one, but very beautiful. And here's a what we call a flame file shell. We do have these in um, around New Zealand, but um, um, they're very closely related to a scallop. And here we go. Here's another pawa. Okay, this is actually not a New Zealand pawa, but a um, uh, it's another abalone, which is what we call pawa, and you can see all these little eye spots and sensory organs around the outside of the shell. But you can tell that it's a pawa because of these little holes that we have in the top of the pawa in New Zealand. Okay, general characteristics of the phylum mollusk. Bilaterally symmetrical, okay, and then they have three parts that you'll need to know. This is what distinguishes mollusks from other uh, other phyla. The body is composed of the following parts. The ventrally located muscular foot. They have a foot, which is the big part that you'd eat in a pawa. All right, that's a big muscular bag or muscular um, part that sticks them to the rocks. They've got a shell. Um, not all of them have shells, but if, but most uh, mollusks have shells, and that is secreted by the mantle. So that's the underlying um, skin layer, okay, or the epidermis. 
and uh, all mollusks have the mantle. So they all have the foot, they all have the mantle, and then they have a visceral mass. So you can think of this as uh, essentially a bag of guts. So all of their their organs, besides, well, not all of their organs because they have uh, muscular tissue and, and the like in their foot, but all of their um, their internal organs like the digestive tract, um, heart, uh, all the, the other um, secretory organs and things like that, the uh, uh, brain, if you will, uh, they're all in located in one visceral mass. So those are the three parts that you need to remember. A, a muscular foot, a mantle, and a visceral mass. Okay, reproduction. They're mostly dioecious, so mostly they have a male and female sex. Okay, so separate. They look different in the, the two sexes look different. They mostly have planktonic larvae. Some of them don't, and they usually settle first and then move into the adult benthic stage. Okay, so we'll look, talk about a few planktonic mollusks, but most of them are benthic. And so they have um, a typical larval stage that if you get into plankton uh, ident identification, you'll you'll be able to um, you'll be able to see. So they've got this trochophore larva. And you can see from this micrograph, it's common to polychaetes as well. So the trochophores of the larvae are very similar in the polychaetes and the mollusks, which gives us a clue that they have an evolutionary um, common ancestor. But you can see this little row of cilia that they use to uh, move the um, larva through the plankton. And it's um, essentially like a... a double cone okay and then they turn into what is called a villager and these are unique to the mollusks so unlike the polychaetes um, then they go into from the trochophore it goes into a villager stage okay and then uh, the villager stage grows and this is after post settlement so this is um, growing and growing and then finally we get to the point where you can see that this is actually a very, very small pawa. Here's the shell, here's the mantle, there's the mouth, there's the muscular foot. That is a 60-day-old juvenile pawa right there. Okay, here's another um, image that shows too much detail, but it shows the uh, larval snail, uh, with a vel which is the villager and with this um, little ring, which will become the foot, but it's this, uh, well, no, it won't become the foot, sorry. It's the, um, it's the larval um, equivalent of the foot because it's used for motion and it's ciliated, and this uh, is what they, they swim with in the um, larval stages. And it's called a velum. So here we go. Here's a nice picture of, a, of another... Um, villager larva with the cilia. So you'll see these things in the plankton or possibly post settlement where they'll use these to uh, move around. Okay, if they have shells, this is carrying on with the, ger with the general characteristics of mollusks. If they have shells, there'll be three layers. The periostracum is the outer layer. So if you think of a pawa shell, if we stick with our pawa, it's the um, the layer that uh, is generally not very, um, very, it's not the beautiful, shiny, lustrous layer. It's the outer layer that um, coffin can be um, pitted, uh, may have a hairy uh, coating over the top of it, as in a hairy whelk. Um, and it's a thin organic layer of something called conchiolin. So that is uh, a tougher outer layer, okay? And then there's the prismatic layer in the middle, which is the crystals of calcium carbonate. And these are what give the um, the uh, shell its its color. So the crystals that, uh, that are laid down in the uh, prismatic layer 
say an Apollo, if we're again sticking with Apollo, we'll give it that uh, lovely green and blue color. And a lot of it has to do, um, a lot of what color these things will exhibit has to do with not only the uh, species, but also the um, diet and nutrition that they are ingesting at the time. So you can get quite different colors of Pawa uh, based on what they've been eating. Okay, and then the nacreous layer, the inner layer, this is the mother of pearl layer, that's that lustrous layer that's usually quite uh, shiny. And this is a thin sheet of calcium carbonate laid down by the mantle. So, all right, and they're all in fact laid down by the mantle. Okay. So now, uh, carrying on with the general characteristics of mollusks, most of them, um, except for the bivalves, and we'll talk about bivalves a little later, but the bivalves, those are the things with two shells, like clams and scallops and pippies and um, anything that clo where the uh, shells close, like with mussels. Okay, these things are the bivalves, but m all of the other mollusks, um, have these things called radula, which are rasping teeth. It's a tongue with these um, continuously wearing out but sh little sharp bits. And it's really uh, great to watch the side of a tank when, when you've got snails feeding on it. And you'll see this little bit. And in class, we'll have a look at some videos of uh, radula moving. But this little bit is its tongue or the radula and it'll stick it out of the mouth and it'll scrape it along and as you can imagine with teeth like these these little projections like these then these are very good at scraping algae off the rocks or they can be modified into lots of different uh, lots of different shapes and um, to do jobs such as boring through the holes are boring through the shells of barnacles or other bivalves, other mollusks, and attacking those mollusks and boring through the, the shells and then um, scraping out the uh, soft tissue underneath while the an that animal is still alive. So these things called the radula um, scrape the food into the digestive tract. Okay. General characteristics again, circulation. They have chambered hearts with ventricles and oracles like we have. Uh, they have paired kidneys to filter wastes. And um, so we're seeing a little bit more um, uh, sophistication and more complexity, maybe not sophistication, but complexity in the organs of, the, um, of this phylum, of the animals of this phylum. Okay, and I'd like to stay away from um, uh, sophistication because everything that we see in all organisms is sophisticated enough and adapt well adapted enough to um, suit its environment perfectly. Otherwise, it would have died out. So we don't like to say that something is evolutionarily higher or. Uh, more advanced than something else. It's just well suited for its environment. And so, the, but the, we can talk about the degree of complexity, and these things are a little bit more complex than some of the other organisms we've seen. Okay, hemocyanin, so instead of hemoglobin, which is iron based, they have a copper based pigment uh, for carrying oxygen around their, their bodies, and that gives them a blue blood. So if you ever, um, like uh, say with a pawa, if you ever cut that pawa, unfortunately they don't clot very well and that pawa will probably bleed to death even if you um, put it back on the rock. So say if you pry one off with a rock and, or with a knife and then find it undersized, there's a good chance that you've probably killed that pawa anyway um, because they don't clot very well. But if you do notice, if you do um, Priapawa off the rocks, you may notice that you see a blue colored blood coming out of that um, out of that organism rather than red blood. Okay.
So we'll just uh, cover on the, or we'll just quickly go over these um, classes that you'll be uh, responsible for, and um, then we will finish this video. Uh, if you follow along in your theory book, you'll see that these ones are uh, that are in dark, that are in black, that are in dark text, are the ones that you're going to be responsible for. Uh, Monoplacophora and aplacophora are very rare, uh, except in their certain particular habitats. And so we are going to stick to the polyplacophora, which are chitons, the gastropoda, which are your typical snails. The bivalves are the things with two shells, like we talked about. Scaphopods are the tusk shells, and cephalopods, nautilus, cuttlefish, squid, and octopus. Those are the things with lots of tentacles that move around. So we will leave it at uh, this point for this video, and for the rest of the videos we will be going over these individual classes. Looking at the um, body plan, the design of these organisms and comparing them to see how they all share a very similar design even though they have radiated out into lots and lots and lots of different types of organisms uh, different types of animals uh, to take advantage of most every marine habitat and terrestrial habitat um, found on the planet